Hallelujah. Well, welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Sunday evening service. Amen. Where Jesus Christ is glorified. On behalf of our pastor, Pastor Larry Burgens, I want to welcome you. Hallelujah. Sometimes it's hard for me to play piano and talk in real time at the same time, but does that forgive me? Let's open up in prayer. Father, we just come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. It's not by our righteousness. It's not by our good works. It's not by anything that we've done. But Jesus has done it all. He lived the holy life. He emptied himself and came down from glory. He paid the price for our redemption. He suffered a death on the cross. And then you raised him from the dead and set him at your own right hand in the heavenlies. And he totally and all by himself accomplished eternal redemption for us. So, Lord, our position is to say, Lord, we thank you. We glorify you. We give you praise. We couldn't do it. We couldn't earn it. Lord Jesus, we give you praise and thanksgiving tonight. And we put ourselves in position to receive all the benefits that you have accrued for us. All that you did, you did for us. All that you received, you share with us. And Lord, we just thank you for another opportunity to gather and stir ourselves up to give you praise and to bring you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. And we thank you, Lord, that as the word goes forth tonight, it will go forth with power and authority. Father God, that out of our pastor's belly shall flow rivers of living water. And Father, we say that the blind shall see, the deaf shall hear. Father God, that people will speak with new tongues, that the sick will be healed, and that the gospel will be preached. And Lord, more than anything else, we thank you that the new birth will take place all around the world, Father God, both tonight and as it's played back in the telecast, in, in, in uh, whatever they call it, when they, you can watch it on demand. Father, we thank you that the word of God will accomplish that which it sent. You said, so shall my word be, which goes out of my mouth. It shall accomplish that to which it sent. And we agree tonight, Lord, that the word of God, Father God, in the power of healing, and the power of the Holy Spirit, Father God, in whatever you placed on our pastor's heart to preach tonight, we thank you that it shall be confirmed with signs following tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, there's some song sheets. I don't know where they ended up at. You might have to look over on my Bible. I might have forgot to hand them out, but they're different than this morning's. So there may be a pile right there sitting on my stuff. If not, it's right in the cover of my Bible. I think I forgot to hand them out.
Thank you.
yeah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Folks, we serve a good God. He's alive and he's well. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. There's no sickness in him. Hey, hey, uh, is this? Okay, I got the. Sing that, sing that praise, sing that praise again. Like, like God can. 
Amen. I can touch you, you can touch me, but it's not the same. It's not the same. But when God touches me, oh, it just like it just like it just it's something that pierces every fiber of my being. Amen. You know what? When you open up your mouth and begin to worship God, begin to praise God, you abide. You be, you you step under the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> You step right under his shadow and, 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 and you begin to give him the glory, begin to worship, begin to praise him. And he just he just hovers over you like a, 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 a chick hover over her little chicklets. Okay. Yes. And he began to draw you unto himself. And he just love on you. <laughs> he just love on you. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. But in the book of Matthew, we thought we started on this last time, chapter 8. Matthew chapter eight. We didn't get we didn't we didn't get to finish with this, but we're gonna deal with it a little bit more today. Amen. Notice what he said in chapter eight, verse number two. He said, "And behold, there come a leper, worshiping him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean.' Amen. See, we need to we need to not only just say it because of sickness and disease. We need to say it because of what else? Oh, 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 oh you must have some of that in your life, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'm, t- I'm t- serious. I'm just serious. I'm serious. You look at me like you're shaking your head. Man. No, I'm serious. If there's something in your life that God that is that is that is that is totally against the will of God, you don't shake your head at it. That's what the world does. You say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command it to go. Yeah. I command it to go. I release your anointing to lift that burden and destroy that yoke. I command it to go. Now, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Why? Because, you see, God has given us authority over all the work of the enemy. And if we don't exercise that authority, nobody else will. You're not going to, you're not, you're not, you know, when something goes something go to bother me, just like today I sneezed. I sit right here and I sneezed. And I, and I start speaking over that. I say, in the name of Jesus, I speak whatever German, whatever, whatever disease trying to come up on my body, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I choose to walk in divine health. And I'll not let you take my health, my healing from me. Amen. I'm just sitting right there and I sneeze. And I and I rebuked it. Amen. You know why? Because I know what God's word will do. Matter of fact, you remember that little booklet that I told you guys about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that, that booklet finally came in. It finally came in. And uh see? Got it. <laughs> I got quite, a, I got a few of them, amen. And uh, and online, you, you know, online they sell them for for seven to ten dollars, but I can sell you one for five dollars if you want one. And uh, and if you want one, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do with it when you when you get it. From the from the middle of the book on page number, this is brand new. First time opening. <laughs> page sixteen. Page number sixteen. That's when that's when the, that's where the confession starts, from page sixteen all the way through page. Uh, just a second, and I'll tell you that too. Twenty-seven. Page twenty-six. <laughs> page twenty-six, not twenty-seven. But but I want you to understand when you if you get this book, I want you to read the whole book in its entirety, like two three times. Because I want you to get the full gesture of what the Spirit of God is saying to you in the writing of this book. Oh, you want one? Oh, yeah. Oh, you want one that fast, huh? <laughs> you have wasted no time. You can have it. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> Amen. But, but, now, but that, this book is something, it's something that I've been using for years. You know, when, and when, when my faith started to get weak, when, 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 when my, when my, when my, Walk with God, starting to wing. I start, I start picking up this thing more and more, more and more. Why? Because it strengthened my spirit. And then when I pray these, I say, God, I thank you that your word is working in me. Bring me to, bring me to, to the to position in the spirit where you have called me, that my spirit would not be weak but strong in you. Amen. Amen. And I thank you for, and I thank you for delivering. I thank you for helping me to to be the man you created me to be from the foundation of the world. Amen. See. When I say this prayer, I don't just when I when I when I quote these scriptures over my life, I don't just quote them and then just leave it at that. 
I add to what I expect, what I'm expecting God to do for me. Yeah. Through these. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because if I'm in, if, if I'm having situations that I have to deal with, then I need God's strength. I need God's wisdom. I need God's anointing. And all, and, and the, all the profession, the profession is in this book. Yeah. Amen. That's why I'm asking you, when you first get the book, read it two, two or three times. More, even more if you want to. Until you get the full gesture of what it's saying. Amen. Once you get the full gesture of what it's saying, then just, you just go back to page number 16, just start quoting the, 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 the professions that he, that, that's in the book. Always to page, whatever that said a while ago. <laughs> 27, yeah. And, uh, and I guarantee you, your spiritual life will begin to pick up. Your spiritual life will begin to pick up. I'm telling you what I know, not something that I heard. I'm telling you what I know. Yeah. Amen. Your, your spiritual walk will begin to be getting strong. Now, if, if anyone don't have five dollars, you want it on credit, I'll give you a <laughs> <laughs> He wants one. He wants one. <laughs> I already got one. You already got one? <laughs> he wants one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now, now I'm telling you, you need you need to start reading that. Read it. And then when you read it, let that word begin to rest in your spirit. And I tell you what, it's gonna it's gonna bring about a change. It's gonna bring about a change. And it and it got some it, and it, it's, it got one about for, for overweight, it got one for sickness and health too. Hallelujah. Yep. Amen. Yep. It sure does. It got one for fear and worry. The, actually the first one is dealing with fear and worry. Amen. Glory to God. But now, let's get back into the word. <laughs> Didn't mean to take off, but I, I told y'all I was gonna get it for you, and then finally came in. And I was I was in, I, I forgot to tell the guys about it this morning. We had more people here this morning, and I forgot to mention it. But it's okay, they'll be back. Glory to God. But now here we see that we see that the leopard man, the man was leprosy, with leprosy. Fear could have stopped him from coming to Jesus, because he knows that in the, in 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 this in this in his condition, when people see him coming close to them, they either get he either get stoned to death, or they going to run away. Amen. But this man, he said, if I stay here, this is what this is what this is what I would have said. If I stay here, I'm going to die. <laughs> if I go there, I might die, and I might not die. They might stone me, they might kill me, but at least I will put forth a little effort to get into that man they call Jesus, the healer. Now, this man, just think of his condition. And what brought him into that condition? It could have been his lifestyle, or it could have been that he came in contact with someone with this germ, with this, with this disease, because it was it was contagious. Right. That's why they couldn't go among people. That's why they wore certain clothing to to show people that they were lepers. Mm -hmm. And when now notice this now, because you see, God may want to touch your body, want to touch your life, and might want to turn some situation around in your health. Because when you when you see when you when you begin to see how God operates, it's going to cause your faith to come to another level. And I never seen Jesus deny anyone for healing. Come on. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter ten, verse number thirty-eight, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. Amen. Healing all. That were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So we see that Jesus never denied anyone that came to him. He never turned them down. He granted their request. Amen. Why? Because they mostly, when they came, they mostly humbled themselves. Just like the one with the issue of blood. She made up her mind. She began to confess it out of her own mouth and out of her heart. If I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be whole. Now she looked out the door, she started a great crowd of people. That could have discouraged her, but it didn't. When she saw him, that encouraged her. She got her focus. She got her aim. She began to see what she wanted. And she will not take 
anything less. And that's what you have to be with God. Once you know what God has said, once you understand the promise that God has spoken concerning you, you don't want to accept anything less than what God has said. Because to accept anything less is to say, God, I don't believe your word is true. Amen. You want what God said, and you want you want you want to you want to win now. <laughs> you want it now. You don't want to wait till later. You want it now. Amen. You want it now. So now let's look here because we see that God is showing us something here. God is showing us something here. Now notice what it said, right? Let's go down to verse number five. Verse number five. And when, a, when, a, when Jesus was entering into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of a palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. See, a lot of times we think that we have to we think we have to have someone to lay hands on us when it's not necessary. Amen. <clears throat> it's not necessary. Why? <clears throat> Excuse me. Why is it not necessary? Because the Bible said in the book of uh, Mark chapter 16 and verse number 18, he said, the believers shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So who's he talking about? He's talking about you. Amen. The one that is sick, the one that is diseased, the one that is hurting, the one that's in pain, the one that has cancer, the one that has diabetes, the one that has a lung disease, the one that, that has uh, colon cancer, whatever the problem may be. God has said in his word, the believer yes. shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. And it works. How do I know? Because it worked for me. If it worked for me, I know it worked for anybody. And I was just a, I was a new Christian. I was a brand new Christian when it worked for me. Amen. I didn't know the word of God that much. I just had started reading the word of God. And I was so in so much pain. And I and I, and I was lying in my bed crying. And I said, oh God, I'm in, oh God, help me, God, help me, God. <laughs> and God, God talked to me in my pity party. <laughs> He said, get up and read your Bible. And I got up and ran to the door because I thought someone was out there trying to play a joke, trying to play a joke on me. But what's no, there was no one there. Y'all heard this so many times. Y'all practically can tell it yourself. <laughs> but that's okay. Amen. Faith that's coming okay. by hearing. That's okay. And hearing by the word of God. Amen. And so, so I ran to the door. No one was there. And then as I'm coming back to my bed, I doubled back around and went to the window. And I didn't see anyone. So I went down and set up my ironing board. And I set my Bibles up on the ironing board. And I sat down and began to read my Bible. And I made it to Mark chapter 16. Where the words start jumping off the page at me. At verse number, seven, at verse number 15. Amen. And, 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 and what he said. And, and, he, and he called his di disciples. And he gave them power. What did he say? And he sent them to preach the gospel. Amen. Amen. Let me just read it from the Bible. There it is right here. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and the baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Amen. Verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Well, you know, <clears throat> at that point, I wasn't a real believer, but I was becoming a believer. But when that word spoke to me, when that word began to speak to my heart, I guess it was just put me, it was, it was uh, something that would help me uh, to understand that what he was saying was true. Because when he spoke to my heart, it just like, it leaped off the page right, right into my spirit. And I, when I did, when it did that, it made me feel good. <laughs> so I read it over, every time it jumped, I would read it again, I would read it again. Then it kept, kept jumping. Then all of a sudden, I began to understand what the word of God was saying to me. In other words, the word began to come alive. The word began to come alive. And as the word began to come alive, you know what I did? I began to believe what God was saying. I began to believe what God was saying. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I could see myself laying hands on my body. So I laid my Bible down. I said, God, I see what you're saying. I understand it. And you... you and I said, you said, you said that 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 the lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Then I said, who are you talking about? I said it again. Who are you talking about? He said, read verse number 17 one more time. He said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You see, I had 
problems that nobody else ever had. That was just me. Now, I don't think nobody else ever had those kind of problems that I had, walking around day in and day out, holding my stomach in so much pain. Somebody might have had something like that, but I don't think so. But the thing about it is that, the thing about it is that when God began to speak to me, he began to give me instructions on how to receive the promise. How to receive the promise. And what, he, what was he expecting of me? He wasn't expecting me to try to dissect it. He only expected me to read it, understand it, and apply it. Once I read it, he began to show me understanding of what I was reading. In other words, the wisdom of God began to come forth. The wisdom of God began to come forth. You're going to find the wisdom of God in that book. Amen. Amen. And it's going. And, and, when, and when you start to get the wisdom concerning what you're asking for, all of a sudden, it's going to begin to open up to you. It's going to begin to open up to you. And as it begins to open up to you, you're going to begin, you're going to, begin to see the light of the truth of what you're looking for. Then the word come alive. And verse uh, John 1 14, and the word became flesh. The word come alive. Then the word began to work in you. The nature and the character of who God is. He's your healer. He's your healer. Amen. He's your healer. Now notice, now notice this. Because you see, <clears throat> you see, the centurion was there with Jesus. But Jesus wanted to go to the man's house, and the centurion said, "Oh no, uh, 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 uh. I don't want you to be, I don't, I don't want you to be defiled. My house is not, I'm not, my house is not a a a a a, 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 a Christian atmosphere. I come, I'm from a, a house of heathens. <laughs> I don't want you, I don't want you to be desecrated. I, I want you to stay clean. I want you to stay holy. Amen. So I want you just speak the word only." And my servant shall be healed. And my servant shall be healed. Now, here I am, lying there, and I'm talking to God, and now God said, get him, read your Bible. And I'm thinking, Lord, how is this going to, don't I have to call for the elders? Do I have to call for the right. for the, for the preacher? Right. Do I have to, and, the, and the Lord said, read verse number 17 again. And he said, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Huh. Shall they cast out devils? And I said, oh, God, my God, I, I see it, I see it. I laid my Bible down. I said, God, here I am. My body's in so much pain. I have two hands. Just like this man. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. And the man said, oh, no, you don't have to come to my house. You know, you don't need someone to come to where you are or you go to where they are for you to receive your healing. Everything you need is right there. If God is there, your healing is right there too. The healer is right there with you. If God is in your, if, if, you're, if you're in the word of God, you're praying, you're seeking the, the will of God, you're seeking the presence of God, then God is right there with you. Mm -hmm. All you got to do is just spend that time with him and mean business. I mean, be sincere. And God will deliver you right where you are with your own hands. I was in so much pain. I would ball up into a knot, lying in my bed, ball into a knot. I would hurt so bad. And I heard God say, read your Bible. And when he told me to read my Bible, I got my Bible and I, and I was reading it. And I made it to Mark chapter 16. And God said to me, God, and, and, and he told me these words. And he said it, 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 put these words in my spirit. Amen. He put these words in my spirit. And I began to apply these words to my to my body, Amen. By what God said, and He and He said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. Verse number seventeen. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devils? They shall speak with their tongue. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. See, he telling you everything that you can do as a believer. He's showing you that you have been given authority. You've been given power over your own body. No one has power over your body but you. Unless you give someone the power over your body. But God has given you the power to maintain that vessel. He has given you the authority to maintain that vessel. How are you going to do it? You're going to do it with the word of God. 
Whenever a cold or a flu or something try to come on me in the wintertime, I, 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 I first sense it trying to come on me it, it, like an itch on the corner of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a real itch, like, a, like something pinching me. And I said, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit from the pits of hell, you get off me now. I'll not accept your germs. I command you to go now. I'll get violent with it. Amen. Why? Because if I don't, I'm going to wind up in the bed. Honey, bring me some Tylenol. Bring me some cold. Some, you know. And I don't like taking medicine. My back was hurting the other day. I worked myself so hard the other day. And my back started hurting. She said, you want Tylenol? I said, no, I don't want no Tylenol. <laughs> I said, No. I said, that's for y'all. I said, don't take that stuff. I don't, I don't take that stuff. Amen. But anyway, what I'm saying is this. God promised you that he will heal you. Not only will he heal you. That was, he said, that was, that, that's, in, that's in 1 Peter 2.24. But in Isaiah 53, he said, you are. You are. Amen. And then he said in and he said in Psalm 107, verse 20, he said, He sent his word and healed me. He sent his word. Amen. So when we believe, when we believe in God for healing, when we believe in God for deliverance, when we believe in God for whatever, we have the word to stand on. We got God promises. When we hold, when we hold fast to God's promise, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. What God has said, God is able to bring you to pass. If we would just only believe it. If we would just only believe it. Amen. Amen. Only believe it. Amen. Now, now you might say, well, well Pastor, that was that was Jesus. That was that was back in Jesus' day. Well, this is Jesus' day, isn't it? Come on. This is still Jesus' day. Amen. And now look at in Acts chapter, Acts chapter 5. Amen. We'll see the disciples. We'll see the disciples walking around and they they exercising God's word. And they healing people everywhere they go. Amen. In Acts chapter 5. Look at verse number, I think verse round by verse number 12. Amen. Yeah, verse number 12. Now notice what it says here. Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And it said, and by the hands of the apostles. Now he didn't, now he didn't say by the hand of Jesus. He said, by the hand of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one what? One accord. See, when we come in a one accord with the word of God and what God is saying, God come in agreement with what we are reading concerning his word. And when we come in agreement, when we when we line up with his word and in our hearts line up with his word, God is going to confirm his word. Amen. These apostles, now Jesus wasn't walking there with them. Jesus had not died. He had gone. But yet these men of God were still walking out the, 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 the training that they was given when Jesus was in the earth. Yeah. They still acted as though Jesus was still with them. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, the word of God has not lost his meaning nor his power since God had given us this holy Bible. The word of God still has stand true for us today. If we was hold fast to what God has said, see, God wants to bring healing the spirit, the spirit of healing back into every church right now. Amen. Every church. Because there's coming some sickness. That's going to come. That's going to. Y'all, we ain't facing it yet. We thought we were facing when, when that uh, pandemic came. Amen. But there's something coming down the pipeline that you're not going to have no doctor be able to help you. There's not going to be any medical terms for what's coming. And we need the word of God. The word of God is the spirit of life. And as we hold fast to what God has said and learn how to receive the promise of God manifest in our life, then we can bring healing to the people that's going to be affected by this thing. You know, when that, when that COVID came, it, they, they, it tried to hit us. But I tell you what, God protected us. Amen. God protected us. And we, we never closed our doors. We kept our doors open the whole time. People was calling us for prayer, and the power of God falling on them. Oh my God! People being healed, being, being delivered. We wasn't even there. We was acting on what we just read. Amen. Just speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. They called and asked for prayer. We just spoke the word, and the people were being healed. <laughs> Why? Because we believe the word of God. 
We hold fast to the word of God. God wants you to have this word so embedded in your heart. That's why I preach it every Sunday night. Amen. Because you're going to need it. When sickness hits your body, you might not be in a position where you can get to a hospital where you can call a doctor or something. You might, you, you're going to need what I'm telling you. Shaka mama. Amen. So he said right in verse number 12, he said, and, and, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people, and they were all with one accord in one in, in Solomon's porch. Amen. And the rest of the and the rest do it. And the rest do as no man join them himself unto to them, but the but the people manifested them, magnified them. Excuse me, talking to manifest, magnified, magnified. Amen. Why would they magnify them? Because they seen the work of God manifested among them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And and they and and they were acting out the same. Principles that Jesus taught them when he was walking the earth. Remember in Luke chapter 9, verse number 1, and he called his 12 disciples together. He gave them what? Power, Power and authority mm -hmm. over all sickness and over all devils and to cure diseases. Mm -hmm. Amen. So what we see right here in Acts chapter 5, we see them acting out what God gave them to do in the training while Jesus was demonstrating the kingdom, the principles of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. He was demonstrating the principle of the kingdom of God because there's no sickness in God's kingdom. There's no sickness in, in God's in, 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 in heaven. Amen. Glory to God. Now notice what it says here because we, we, need, we need to see this. We need to understand what God is saying. We need to understand what God is saying to us. Verse number, verse number, verse number uh, 14 says, And believers were the more added to the Lord multitude, both men and women. Why? Because they saw the power of God manifested. They saw the power of God manifested. Not only people got saved, people got healed. People got delivered. Amen. People got delivered. Verse number, verse number 15. And as much that the in, in the much that they brought forth the sick into the street and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter. Now, that was nothing to do with no hand. <laughs> this is only the shadow. Amen. The shadow, verse number 15, only the shadow, amen, of Peter, uh, oh my God, might, might overshadow, over, overshadow some of them. Verse number 16, there came also a multitude out of the city round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with what? Unclean spirits, Amen. and they were healed. Everyone, yep. see, God, God never turned. Jesus never turned anyone around, and the disciples had the opportunity. They didn't turn anyone around either. They were all healed. They were all healed. Amen. That's why it's so important that we hear that we take a hold of what God is saying to us because you see. God is expecting us to walk in this knowledge. Amen. He's expecting us to walk in this knowledge. We not, you know, we, we read what Jesus did, but look what the what look what the apostles and the followers of Christ did. Amen. Glory to God. Now let's back it up. Let's look at Acts chapter Acts chapter three, verse number one. Acts chapter three. Amen. It, we see the same. We see a, another great miracle, and it caused multitude of people to be saved. Amen. Glory to God. And that's why that, this is what God is saying to us. If we honor the word of God, hold fast to the word of God, God will confirm his word. You may say, well, Pastor, you know what? I got to, I got I'm trying to straighten up my life. Yeah, that's a good thing. You need to straighten up your life. But at the same time, you need to believe the gospel. You need to believe the gospel. Amen. Notice what he said, right? Verse number one. And and Peter, verse, uh, Acts three one. And Peter and John was went up to the temple. Went went together up to the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That means like three o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Being the ninth hour. And certain men, lame from his mother's womb, carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which was called beautiful. To ask alms of them that entered into the temple, 
See, this man, he was, he, he was crippled from his mother's womb, and they put him on the corner to beg for money to provide for the family. Now notice this. And he gave heed unto them, no, verse number three, verse number three. And seeing Peter and John about and seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asking alms, and Peter fastened his eyes upon him, which John said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee in the name of in the, name in the name of Jesus Christ, Christ of Nazareth. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Rise up and walk. He didn't tell you to rise up in, in a, 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 what's your name? <laughs> no, he said the name of Jesus. He didn't say rise up in Larry's name. He didn't say rise up in Eric's name. He didn't say rise up in, 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 any other, in, in any of our name. He said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. See the power, what he said in, in, Mark, in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16, verse number 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. The power is in the name of Jesus. Who gave the disciples the authority to go out and to put to practice what they've been learning? Jesus did. When did he do it? In Acts chapter 9. Luke, Luke chapter 9, verse number 1. And then Luke chapter 10, he called 70 more and sent them. And they came back rejoicing. They didn't come back crying. They didn't come back all sad. They didn't come back all beat up, drugged down, and clothes all tore off. They came back rejoicing and saying, Lord, even the devils are subject to us through your name. Through your name. Amen. Now, here we are, right now, have the opportunity to minister to sick folk everywhere we go. Because everywhere you go, there's sick folk around you. Yeah. You have the you have the you have the opportunity to practice what I'm sharing with you right now. Anywhere, any day you want to. If you don't have nowhere, you don't know about have nobody sick around you, just go visit the hospital. <laughs> they're only in like corn. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. They, they might let you in now. They might not let you in because, like I say, he just went there this morning. They don't want. They won't let me in. <laughs> what do you want to come in for? I'm a preacher. Oh no, you can't come in here. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, I thought so. I thought it was weird too because that never happened to me. But we never had a pandemic before, neither. I was going to say yes. <laughs> Amen. But the thing about it, the thing about it, that God has given you the authority. He's given you power over all the powers of the enemy, and it's time for you to start acting on what God has given you. You know, when I go out, when I when I go to those crusades, and when I stand up on the on the platform, I I take authority over the spiritual atmosphere. Yeah. <laughs> I exercise authority over the spiritual atmosphere, and I release the angelic hosts. Yeah. I release the angelic, angelic hosts. Host. Shaka. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you feel that feel just changed just like that? Yes. I did just then. <laughs> Amen. Yes. And, 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 and let me tell you something. And let me tell you something. You, you can see where you can see where it starts when it starts settling in because you see the you see you see the, the attitude of the people start to change. You see the attitude of the people begin to change. Amen. That's why I gotta take Eric with me as he can he, he can get out there and see what it is. May, and may, may get up there and, you ain't scared are you <laughs> <laughs> amen so you need to raise your you need huh I said most times but not about that kind of stuff not about that kind of stuff okay <laughs> amen God doesn't want you to be scared anyway he wants you to be he wants you to be uh, courageous he wants you to be strong amen but so notice now notice now notice now they at the temple and Peter and John he, said, he asked the arms, and Peter and John said, Silver and gold have I none. But I can give you what I do have. Such as I have, give I thee. Then the, the Peter rushed out and grabbed the man by the arm, by the hand, and began to pick him up. Immediately, that anointing 
began to work in that man's body. Immediately, the power of God zapped this man in his ankle and his leg and his feet. And all of a sudden, this man began to get up and he began to leap and he began to walk and he began to walk around praising God. Look what, the, oh! Can't you imagine this man just be able to walk for the first time in all his life, get up and start walking around? He all excited and everybody around him see how excited he is. Wow. And, 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 and as Peter and John going into the temple, he, he won't leave their side. He's walking with them, praising God and giving God the glory. And now he, he get the attention of everyone on the temple ground. Oh, glory to God. See, that miracle gave them the ability to preach Jesus Christ, him crucified, a dead, buried, and a risen Savior. And many were added to the church. There were 3,000 added to the church after that. Let me tell you something, folks. When you see a notable miracle, you are in position to bring about the greatest revival that the world has ever seen. God wants to do something in these last days that's going to affect humanity in such a way that they're going to run to the church. They're going to run to hear the gospel. Many people right now, there's a lot of people right now walking around in the world, they want someone to preach to them. Yeah. They want to hear the gospel. They want to be saved. I want, I, I, like I shared earlier, I went to this job site just the other day, and, uh, and I was getting I was leaving out, and I was talking, I was, you know what I mean, I, I carry on a lot of, I, I'm a very uh, talk, talkative guy, you know, and I was talking to these people, and I was, they, they, they thought I was real kind, real nice, the way I was communicating with them. And as I was leaving out of the place, I was walking to my truck and God spoke to me and said, go back and minister to them. And I went on and put my tools in my truck and I walked back. I took, I took my, my, my car and I took a pen. See, my pen is my car too. I gave them both a pen and I gave them a card. And, and I said, this is who I really am. They said, really? You're a pastor? I said, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah, I'm a pastor. And, and, I said, and, I, and I said, I was on my way to my truck, and God told me to come back and minister to you guys. And so my job right now is to see, are you ready for eternity? If you would die right now, will you make it to eternity? Will you make it in to, to, with Jesus? And they just looked at me, huh? Yeah, I'm asking you that. <laughs> and and I said, I said, I said, I said, God sent me back for a reason. He's not going to send me back just to hear myself talk. No, He sent me back for a reason. Are you ready for eternity? If you would die right now, where would you spend eternity? That's it. That's the question. And they said, Well, I think I'll be going to heaven. I said, You think? Yeah. Then you may not be there. <laughs> And so I led them through the sinner's prayer right there on the spot with tears coming out of my eyes. The presence of God was so strong in that doctor's office. And God touched them, those two people. They gave their heart to the Lord. And as I was walking out, I began to worship God, began to thank God for allowing me that opportunity to minister to those people. And then the very next day, I ministered to this whole this whole week, all last week, everywhere I went, I ministered to people. It was it was a powerful week for me. I, because of the message that I'm preaching every day, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's the same way when it comes to healing. When you minister to people and you deal with the sin, it'll also, if they sincere, when they say that prayer with you, if they sincere, it'll also deal with their health. It'll also deal with their health. That's why we have to be sincere with the word of God because God is going to take what you do. He's going to take every word that you speak and he's going to examine 
those words with the motive of your heart. That's why it's so important, folks, that we understand what God is telling us. God is saying, I want you to minister to the sick. I want you to go. I want you to cast out the devil. I want you to, to heal the sick. I want you to even raise the dead. He said, freely as you receive it, freely give it. Amen? So this, this man said, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof, but if you speak the word only, my servant shall be healed. And Jesus looked at his disciples. He said, I have not found this kind of faith in any of you. Right, right. Not even in Israel. Not in Israel. And here it is, this, this foreigner with more faith than you. And you've been following me all this time. God is looking for people that are sincere. And when he finds that one that is sincere, he's going to take him as a trophy. He's going to use him in a very powerful way. In a very powerful way. My times. Glory shot to la rabakia. And when I look at that, when I look at that, when I see what God is saying to us, and, and then I see what he what he did right here in, in Acts, amen. And then and then now look at Acts chapter 9. Look at Acts chapter 9. Because we see the most, we see we see the hand of God just 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 being released upon the heart and upon the mind of the people. And we see God just reaching out to touch lives and to transform hearts, to change them. Amen. Look at verse number 10. Verse number 10. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias and to, was that to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight and inquire in the house of Judah for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And then I see, now what, what, what was Saul doing at first? He was a persecutor of the church. He was destroying, bringing people into custody that called on the name of the Lord. Now God, on the, way, on the road of Damascus, yeah. he appeared to him. He fell down on the ground. What happened? Uh, Paul came, well, Saul came in contact with absolute authority. He came in contact with pure authority, and it was so pure that he fell down to the ground, and he began to cry, Lord, what would you have me to do? Yeah, keep <laughs> Amen? So, see, we have to understand what God is saying to us, because we see, if we don't understand, we'll never do it. We'll never do it. Amen? And verse number 13 said, and Ananias answered, Lord, what have, what, what have, what and, and, and Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard many of this man, how much evil he had done to thy, to thy saints in Jerusalem. And, and here he had authority to do what? From the chief priest to bind all that called on thy name. Right. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen, what? Vessel. A chosen vessel unto me. To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and, and children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and put and put in his hands, notice what he said, put in his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou cometh, had sent me. That thou mayest what? Receive. Receive thy sight. Now Ananias was a deacon. He wasn't a preacher. No. But look how God used him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Look how God used him. Mm -hmm. Amen? Why? How did God use him like that? Because he was a man that was full of the Holy Ghost. Really? Full of the Holy Ghost. Glory to his name. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Verse number 18 said, And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales. Yeah. Ooh. Scales. Yeah. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. 
You see, when we hear what God is saying to us and we honor God, we will experience the anointing that goes with the word that he calls our heart to receive. The anointing of the word is not departed from the word. It's only waiting for you to understand what he's saying that the word will come alive so you can apply it to your life and to others. Woo! You can't, if you don't understand it, you can't apply it. But the moment you begin to understand it, you can not only, you not only apply it to your own health, to your own life, but you can apply it with someone else that has a need. You can show the word of God is working, that it is alive. That's why he said, my son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my saying. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life to those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20, verse 20 through 23. Amen. God's word is ready for us to take it to heart and to apply it to our life so that we not only apply it to our life, we're going to apply it to the lives of the souls around us. Amen. This is what God is saying to us at this hour. I got to stop. Come on, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can y'all did y'all get anything out of this today? Yes. I'm telling you, God is trying to He's getting He's he, he bringing us to a place in the spirit where if we would just walk with him, we can experience his strength. We'll see his glory. And his power will be released. Because without the power, no matter how much present you got, if you don't have no power with that present, you still, you don't want you're going to have a feeling. But if you got power, you can deliver, you can heal, you can set the captives free for this purpose. The Son of God was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. <clears throat> and I believe that we are in that season. That as we come to understand who we are as children of God. That the authority that God has given us. will begin to rise up on the inside of us. And we begin to exercise that authority against the kingdom of darkness. And many lives are going to be touched and changed. And many are going to come to Christ that would have gone to hell. But because you was not selfish and you opened up your heart to give them the word of God, God granted you the privilege of experiencing his goodness and his mercy. And by your hand were signs, wonders, and miracles wrought. Because you trusted and believed the word. And that's the way it is. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you, Lord, that your word is alive. Your word is bringing about the reality of your presence because in your presence there is fullness of joy and as we enter into your presence we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your course with praise And Lord, your name will be glorified, Father, because we're not trying to do something in our own strength. We're not trying to work up something because we feel like we can. Because we know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because greater is he 
that is in us than he that is in the world. And if you are for us, then God, no matter what the devil try to bring up against us, we know that we that he's no match for us because the great one lives in us, dwells us. And so, Father, I thank you. I bless you. And I glorify you. And I thank you, Father, that your word is working in us the hope of glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your anointing, your healing anointing. I release the importations of the anointing that rest upon this message that you have given me. I release it into the atmosphere. I release it into the spiritual realm right now. There's no need for someone to lay hands on us, Father. We know, God, that your word is full of life and health and healing to all our flesh. And as we hear your word, as we receive your word, God, your word will not return void. We will accomplish that what you set it out to do. And we will not deny your presence. How can we when we're walking in divine health because of your word? Thank you, Father. I bless your name. I bless your name. Father, I speak blessing over your people. I thank you, Lord God, that the anointing that's upon this ministry right now, right now, Father, is being ushered out into every heart and upon every soul under the sound of my voice. Oh, God, I rebuke every sickness and every disease. I curse cancer to the root. I command cancer to dry up and die and leave that body now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Father, I give you all the praise. I praise you, Father. I praise you. I praise you. I praise you for it. In Jesus' name. I speak to that ligament. I command that ligament to, to, to cease your existence right now in that body. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come out! Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Your word, Lord God, your word will not return void. I speak to those blind eyes. I speak to those blind eyes. I command this spirit of blindness, come off now in Jesus' name. Loose that person right now in Jesus' name. Loose that man. Loose that woman right now in Jesus' name. Loose that child right now in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of blindness. Go! 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 Now, Father, I decree and declare new sight. New sight. New sight. Where darkness word, let the light come on. Let the light begin to shine forth. And let those eyes be open now. Let them be open now in Jesus' name. I thank you. I praise you for it. I praise you for it. I praise you for it, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm. Mm. That was a powerful one there. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The spirit of blindness has to go. The spirit of blindness has to go. Has to go. Has to go. Now, if you're with someone right now that is blind, I want you to lay your hand over those blind eyes right now. And in the name of Jesus, command that blind spirit to go. Right now, in Jesus' name. Do it right now. Lay your hands over the blind eyes right now and command that spirit of blindness to go right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Do it now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Oh, glory to God. Oh, 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 Glory. Thank 
you, Lord. I want to hear the testimony. I want to hear the testimony. I know what I'm talking about. I want to hear the testimony. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. It's time for us to take out more of our evening offering up. Now, those of you that are with us right now by the internet, you want to sow a seed, don't forget we're getting ready to go to Pakistan, and we need your support. We need your support. You that are that received your sight right now, you need to sow a significant seed. You that just received your sight, you need to sow a significant seed for the souls of Pakistan. Amen. And help us to reach this nation. Amen. And I know that many preachers go there. Amen. But not every preacher has the anointing to carry out the assignment that God wants to accomplish. And I'm asking for your help. Because I know God had told me to go. And I'm asking you, will you support this work? Amen. Will you support this work? Hallelujah. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Thank you for it, Father. Every dollar that you sow toward this mission, it has a, a face on it, and it also has a name on it. That face is a face of someone out there on that ministry field. That name is a name of the family members that's on that ministry field. They all may need a touch from heaven. Let God use you to bring about this great harvest of soul. Amen. We need your help. Sow that seed right now in support of this work. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus. If you want to sow your seed, you can go to my website, LarryBurkinMinistries.com. Amen. Go to my website. You can use your cash app, uh, Larry Burkins. You'll see my picture with my face there. Or you can use Venmo. Amen. Or you can use PayPal. Or you can send it to my postal service. That's P.O. Box 417913. Sacramento, California, 95841. Amen. The, the, the original time for Pakistan was in October, but they moved it up to July because the weather in October well, last year was flooding and a lot of rain. And they said, we, we want to get you there while we got good weather. So they want me to come in July. Amen. So I'm asking you, because I can't go in July unless you help me to go. Amen. So I'm asking your help right now. We had until October to, to get the money. Now we got on until July. So I'm asking your help. And I need I need this very soon, very fast. Because July is just next month. And I need to get the paperwork going right now. And I'm not going to get it going until I know I got the money to go. Otherwise, I just put it off until the weather straightened up. But I, I'm not going to put it off indefinitely, but I'm going to put it off until the weather straightened up. Amen. But I need your help right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you that you would touch lives, that you would touch hearts everywhere, Father, that this program is reaching out to right now. And God, that people will see the, the, the urgent, the urgency, the seriousness of this time that we are in, that the harvest season is right upon us, God. And God, you don't want this, you want to reap this harvest. You want to send laborers into your vineyard to bring in the harvest. And Father, I'm willing and I'm ready to go, but God, I need the help of your people. Father, I ask you to touch their hearts, that you will speak to their hearts, that they will not only support it, Lord God, but God, there may be some that might want to say, Pastor, I want to go with you. I want to be a part of it, not just with my finances. I want to go with you. And I want to tell you right now that you can, if you will get with me and tell me, give me your information, I can get it arranged where you can go. You can go. But you got to have a passport, then you got to get a visa. Amen. You got to have a passport, update the passport, and then we got to get you a visa. Amen. That's not hard. If you got a passport, the visa is not a problem. But if you want to go, you can. And I would love to carry you with me. Let you see on hand what God is doing. Amen. You might even be a part of it. God, I just bless your people right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Everything all right? Amen. Now, if you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life right now, I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that. Amen. If you never made Jesus Christ Lord of your life, I'm going to do that. Father, right now, for the seed, before I... For the seed that we just taken in, Father, I bless this seed. I bless this seed. 
And my seed too. I bless this. That's okay. I put it down there. I bless this seed, Father. In the name of Jesus. I sanctify it, Lord. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that as we have given tonight of our finances to support your work, Father, I believe that the angelic host right now is going out. Going out. Right now, Father, they're going out to minister on our behalf that we will not experience lack, but that we have more than enough that the covenant may be established continually in the earth. Deuteronomy 8, 18. Father, I thank you for it. I bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. Now, for those of you that never made Jesus Christ love your life, maybe you have, maybe you bachelor, maybe you are living outside of God's will right now. You want to make things right with God. I want you to say this prayer with me right now. You want to make things right with God. Say this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent of my sin. I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Create in me. Create in me. A right spirit. A right spirit. And renew in me. And renew in me. A clean heart. A clean heart. Jesus, I believe. Jesus, I believe. That you are the Son of God. That you are the Son of God. And you died for my sin. And you died for my sin. Today, as I confess. Today, as I confess. My sin. My sin. Though they are many, though they are many, they are forgiven. They are forgiven. Thank you, Father, Thank you, Father. for forgiving me. For forgiving me. Amen. If you said that prayer, your sins are forgiven, and God' head is turned back around toward you, and He said, "Devil, take your hand off my child. He's just repented. Or she just repented. Take your hand off right now and loose them and let them go." And all of a sudden, now your prayers is being heard on high. Once again, Father, I thank you for what you're doing right now in the lives of those people that said that prayer. I release your anointing right now, Father, over them. And I ask you, Father, that you will visit them by the power of your spirit and lead them to a place where they can be trained up and taught the word of God that they will not fall again. I bless your people now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And if you're here today and you need special prayer, I pray for you right now. Anyone need prayer right now, I pray for you right now. <laughs> everybody all right? That's good. Let's pray for everybody on the internet there. Father, I thank you that your hand rests upon the people, Lord God, right now. They're watching by the internet. I release your anointing, your healing power right now, Father. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they too will receive a manifold blessing on their lives because of that prayer they just prayed. And that you will direct them to the house where they can be trained and taught your word so their life can be victorious and not one that is beat down. I bless your people. I thank you for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you. Join us again on Tuesday night as we come to share the living word of God. We love you. God bless you. Bye-bye. Get that one down there.